Okay. Um, so you were asking about a story from set. And so, and now it's so anticlimactic out of nowhere, but this kid, um, Gabe, he would have me hold stuff just like his real mom. And I would end up holding it and I'd be on break. And I'm like holding his stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, I'm not his real mom. I'm the acting actress. I have to hold his stuff. But it was, I kind of, it just naturally becomes, um, it, you naturally become the character a little bit. So I was taking care of him and helping him behind the scenes navigate all the teen drama. And it was just interesting, all the kids. It was, it was really, it was great. Lots of, it was fun to see kids coming up and where I have been, you know, as a new newbie. And, you know, it was just, it was, it's fun. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I have a, here a few fan questions for you. Okay. So I'm going to read them. Okay. Um, first question is, who are some of the talented writers you would most like to work with again? Writers? Yeah. Oh, gosh. Um, Marlena Hope was one of the writers on The Kicks. And you could tell she was going places. She just had so much excitement. Her those the, the scripts that she worked on I loved and she's gone on to work on a bunch of good shows so I want to work with her again because I just like her and I like her ideas and she's cool um any of the writers from the kicks obviously or any um there's so many great directors and so many great writers um I feel like there's um it's funny I've never had this I've had a couple directors more than once but I've never had the same writer I don't think it's fun when you're on a show and you're working with a writer's room because they start to know you, you know them, they're writing a little bit towards your strengths and, and, and it's kind of like you, you're working together a little bit and you're just so happy when they come up with good stuff and they're so happy when you deliver a line or maybe add something or understand where they're going with a line. And, um, you know, so it's, that's, you know, there's just been a lot of great greats over the years. Even just on that one show, The Kicks, there was a lot of great people. Um, so another question is, um, do you think there is a future where reality based family friendly shows like the kicks will make a return? I hope so. I just saw there's a show, another show that I just peeked at it and it seems like it's onto a good start. It's called the babysitters club. And I think it's oh, a yeah. similar, it has a similar vibe. I, I didn't, I haven't watched it yet, but I thought, oh, okay, because I really think there's a need for that. I think that I was thrilled that, you know, the kicks, it was about a little, a girl who's, you know, focused on a girl who's good at a sport, not just dating or looking pretty or, you know, she was a real athlete. And I was excited to see where that went because so many kids are living that life, you know, and then it was just a real family. I just, I, that was kind of, that style of show was big. You know, I was raised on that style of show and I like that, you know, style, frankly. Uh, another question is, uh, yes, what, what was Better? it a surprise? Was it a surprise when Amazon changed directions and canceled shows like The Kicks? It was a huge surprise. I was shocked. Um, mainly because it won an award, like it won a director's award for our director, Liz Allen. Mm -hmm. She's amazing. She won, um, so the show was recognized. It got great, like rabid feedback. People loved it. It was sad, like it was, it was sad. Um, just because we knew where that we knew where they were going to take the show in the next season or two, and it was exciting to 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 kind of feel that out and see, you know, and work with everybody again. Because we'd done the pilot and then took a long break, and then we came back and did the show. So it's you know you miss everybody, and it's it um it was a great team. Do you think it's possible to to take it somewhere else? I was hoping. I think it, that day might that ship may have sailed. Mm. but there's still so many fans that still really, really clicked with a lot of people. Um, I would love to do it. Um, there, um, so maybe you never know. Um, I know six is still acting. I mean, those kids have grown up a lot since then. Um, but it was such a, it was such a good cast that the cat, there's other, and they've all gone on to work and do good things. So, you know, I think that, I, I was sorry to say, I, I used to hold out a little hope that it might come back. And I think a lot of stuff happens to do with money and stuff. And it was, it was a co-production. So it wasn't just a pure Amazon show. And 
sometimes it comes down to, well, I can make my own show and, and earn all the money versus split it with a, another production company. So sometimes it's that kind of thing. Um, if it was based on like response, I think, and, and rating, like in terms of response, people really loved it. So I, I, I'm gratified that people liked it, you know. Have you ever thought about working as a, a director or, or writer in creating your own content? Yes. Um, and it's funny, the shows, the show that I would like to work on would be a show probably very similar to The Kicks. I didn't know I would even like it after I uh, just working on it. And then I, my kids were the same age as the age difference mm -hmm. and as the kids on the show. And it was just so real. I mean, David Babcock, who wrote the pilot, as well as Andrew Orenstein, who ended up being exec producer, they just added so many real elements to it that I've lived in real life. And so I think there's something about that type of show that I liked. It was so authentic. Like one time when they go away and the kids go on a soccer trip tournament and I stay home watching on this app, a tracker app, I do that same thing with my own kids. And it's so real, like it's so um, current. And I, think, and I think people, I think the parents were entertained by that as well as, you know, um, and then the kids, it was, and it was kind of taking on modern things. Like at the same time that we had an episode about the girls team not getting to use the good field that, like the boys soccer team did. And it was like paralleling with what was going on with the US women's soccer team and the men's team. <laughs> It was just so timely. So I, I think that's that intersection of reality really is interesting to me. And I do, I, when I think about it, I go, gosh, I did set out to write, um, but I do like to perform. But I think a lot of writers maybe are performers because in some ways when you're writing, you're performing it in your head a little bit. You're listening to the music of the scene. What does it need? So I can see, I, I would love to um, uh, take it in that direction. My sister Leanna has directed and she wants to direct. And it's a crowded field too. You know, it's all hard, it's all crowded. But I think there's room, there's always room for somebody else that is passionate. Yeah. And it's very important for, for these kinds of shows to, to, to be done, uh, especially in, right now where there's so much hate and, uh, and confusion in the world and um, a good family show, it, it's so important, I think. It's, it's, it's important because I, I went, that show mirrored my family experience. I didn't, though, the, you know, I'm glad that there's, there's, there's shows that mirror other people's experiences, but so many people are living that experience. It's ho-hum. There's a mean girl on the soccer team, you know, and you got to put up with it. You got to live with her and you got to figure it out. There's, you know, and the little, it was just life, you know, just general everyday life that a lot of people were living and so i think that that is why that connected and parent trap did and back in the day too it was kind of everyday life but with a twist of what triplets that you know but there's something about that people like to identify with characters i think that people used to write into us and go i'm a total jesse oh i'm a lisa oh i'm a megan and because we were playing kind of three separate roles and it was so fun to see and that's why people and that's what i do when i watch a show i go oh this is just like me you know, only I'm not, you know, laundering money in the Ozarks, but, uh, you know, that kind of stuff. Like it's, it, it, it's fun to see because there's a hum basic humanity that we all share that's in the, in the show. So I, you know, as much as I would love to be in a, in a superhero show, I don't think that I connect as much uh, just mm. with, just with action or, you know, it, unless there's that like interesting human connection story that I like, you know. Uh, another fan question is, uh, what are some of the early influences in your life that contributed to the adult you? That contributed to the what was the last thing you said? To the adult you. Oh, the adult me. Oh, gosh. Um, <laughs> let me think. Well, I think that I was raised on Disney, Sunday Night Disney, mm -hmm. and Disney movies in general. Um, and I remember it like my favorite comedian of all time was um, Lucy Ricardo. I love Lucy and that show, it consistently inspired me and inspires me and it's such an innocent humor. And there's something about that, that it's just who I am. And that's, that's, I can see how that inspired me when I was younger and, and that's just who, that's what I still find funny today. That kind of, um, that kind of humor. Um, I think people that, in, that influenced my life, I. I remember thinking like I didn't have an Alex Morgan famous soccer star to look up to when I played soccer. I would have loved that. I mean, I had, um, 
I remember the women, the Carrie Strug moment was a huge one for me. I must have been a teenager or something when she's an American gymnast that had broken her foot, but she had to do one more vault to win the gold for the team. And she just had that heart and she did it, even though arguably it was a terrible decision for her health, <laughs> but she did it. And she, and there's something about that that really inspired me, you know, to ask myself, would I do the right thing when it's called on me? Will I have that bravery, that courage? Um, like, um, you know, I had a lot of uh, mentors at church growing up. We were really um, involved in our church growing up in Fullerton. And then um, other just, I'm trying to think other actors. Like I said, like Haley Mills was always an inspiration from when I was little and how she's had a whole full career. Um, and now there's a lot of people that I see on TV, um, I'm blanking on her name, but the woman who wrote Fleabag, I admire her from afar because she got it done. She writes and she acts and she, and she's just herself unapologetically. And I guess secretly I aspire to being myself unapologetically in front of the world like that. And um, just believing in her little message she's telling, you know, and hoping that it, it, it finds an audience. I think, you know, that is scary mm -hmm. and inspiring to me at the same time. Have you ever done theater? No real theater. Mm -mm. No. Would you like to? I would. I think when I do, um, when I do like a like a sitcom, it feels like theater because you've got this audience and you um, you're mm -hmm. you're doing it, and and so I think that scratches that itch of that live audience. But yeah, I would like it. I would be afraid because you have to do the same thing, you know, seven yeah. shows a week. But I really admire people who do it. I would love an opportunity to do it, and that opportunity might be coming. <laughs> As my kids are getting older and moving on, I can commit to something like that. And, you know, I think that's the, you know, the, that definitely is a possibility for me. But some people can handle the, the repetition of the, the, the fear, but... Um, I think if you have, great. yeah, it's, it would be, um, it's hard. You become whoever you're playing. So when you're playing something dark, it's really hard to shake that off every night and go back. Right. Um, that's why playing in a light rom-com or light, fun family that's easy you know it feels good it doesn't play with mess with your head too much but it's good to challenge yourself it's good to you know strengthen your technique and make sure you have good techniques so when that opportunity comes you can accept the job and do it except of the week so, How about a i've done a lot of studying all these years pardon would you would you like to do a sitcom yes that's probably my Before number you. one goal i mean now i should they even have sitcoms anymore I, that like half hour traditional sitcom, it's a thrill because you're working up to that shoot day and on that shoot day, you're doing a live performance and then you're always much better. You always just raises your game when there's people in the audience and they're listening and you can hear them laughing. And it just, it's like a symbiotic thing and you're playing together. It's really fun. That, that would, you know, I love TV. That's my favorite medium. My favorite. And in some ways, it's it's similar to the theater a, a sitcom, right? Because you have to rehearse with the. Because you're rehearsing all week, and working with the writers, and then you have that day, and that's on the day. There's no more. You now the scene is the way it's going to be, and it's like a little mini play. You know, you set up and shoot, set up and shoot. You might have two takes. Maybe you try to get it on one, and um, it's just that thrill of live audience. So. Yes, I agree. How, how... Sitcoms need to make a yeah. comeback. Big boy on TV. I agree. I like sitcoms. I, the, you know, what? guess what the teens are loving watching? They watch Friends. They watch the classic ones before, you know, before cell phones. They love it. How, how do you see the future of actors in acting going, going forward now after the virus? <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of creative shooting, a lot of... Um, a lot of single shots. I think pe people are probably looking at their scripts going, how can we get rid of this crowd scene in this exterior? It's going to be boring because they're going to have to do two people in a room instead of in an office. You know, it's going to, I think that there'll be a lot of digital opportunities for people to populate things. It won't be as fun because it'll be more green screened and the fun of even being on a film set is all the people, you know? So it's going to be uh, more isolated, more, um, we're all like, going to be separated. 
I, I hope it, I hope it all ends soon, but I, I guess that's wishful thinking at this point. I think that um, there's going to continually be interesting voices and there's always going to be somebody who comes out of nowhere, and connects with people that's like, just puts their stuff out there and suddenly becomes a sensation, you know, it's, and that's exciting. So I think that there's room for everybody, everybody. I think the the theater the theater is gonna have the the worst time because yes. of the, this yeah theaters and movie and movie theater movie theaters as as well and also just the theater itself it's gonna struggle and people don't realize they think the arts are there it's we were already hanging on by a thread like mm -hmm. this they you know we need support we need fundraisers people to to who believe in music and the arts and theater live theater and that's gonna take such a hit and I. I hope that it can come back because if you've ever gone and just been, I've been, that's another defining. I went to New York once and just saw theater and that was defining the, the things I saw like each for different reasons. I saw Christopher walking on stage. I saw just inspiring. And it's, it's, it's an experience everybody should participate in and, 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 and enjoy. It's a, it's part of a human connection. It's part of hum, the human condition to go to theater. And it's, that is going to take the biggest hit. You're absolutely right. And that breaks my heart. I think a lot of theaters are going to close. A lot of people are going to have to move on and do other things with their lives. Hopefully they'll keep acting. But the day-to-day -day actor who's not starring in a show, I mean, there's to over 200,000 of us actors in L.A. And, you know, we can't earn a living, you know. Right. It's and I, I think they, they'll have to, to find some uh, security measures to, to, to prevent the the, yeah. the infections on in, in the theaters yeah, yeah. um that that will be uh very expensive and i don't know if uh, each theater company will have the the means to do it um regularly uh, yeah. like and how will they and to fill seats that are already on a, a shoestring budget you know and and then they're, they're not gonna be able to put everybody in all the seats i don't know if yeah. anybody has a chance has an answer to this um it Maybe they'll have a way to do some sort of fancy Zoom <laughs> live theater thing. Um, maybe they're going to come up with something like that. I think um, the, the the best thing I've seen uh, about this uh, was came from uh, Antonio Banderas. He has a, a theater in Spain, and he took immediate measures uh, to 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 make sure that that the um, the company can continue to to function. He he had. Uh, regular cleanings with the, the top um, right yeah That's and so great. i think they, they even dis disinfect the, the shoes at uh, at entry and uh, uh they they gave away masks all all kinds of stuff really top-notch stuff i think that that was the only place that i've seen that took immediate okay. measures yeah i think he saw where where this was heading and and he he tried to stop it right right then and now but it, it will be hard for all for all companies to do that, and uh, the, the, especially I, yes. the small. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot. There's a lot, and and just think about like, you know, the Hollywood Bowl, or you know, the 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 arts, the music, music, and and museums and theater are gonna they're gonna take a huge. Um, it'll be impacted forever. And honestly, it's 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 a it's a problem. Like it's hard, and some people are able to work. You know, some people, the pandemic has helped their work and other people has put them out of work. But the arts are something that we always have to, as a, as a society, continue to support and continue to help and, and reinvent and, you know, try to support in any way you can. Because it's... I went to a play, uh, I went to a friend's play in March when this was all starting to happen. And I actually feared for my life because um, th there were no security procedures in, in place. And, and it was a, a really big theater. Um, that they, they should have had security measures and they put us all in a hall all next to each other people coughing and sneezing uh for for half an hour before the play started then they took us to another hall in another 15 minutes where people were <laughs> even sneezing even harder and coughing it, it, it was just two hours of pure horror oh no so uh, wow. I, I can imagine now it, it will be even worse but uh, yeah, it's well. I hope that I hope that everybody's staying safe, and I hope that if we just can get this behind us, we can all go back to work and go back, you know, in some way. Because I think the we're all so isolated and so so uh, disjointed, disconnected. Um, 
So are there any, any other questions that I should answer? Or? Yeah, uh, uh, just to, uh, I okay. was going to ask regarding this, that, um, that if you booked another job now, w would you be fearful for, for yourself if you had to? No. no? I'm really not afraid. I, I, I kind of want to get it at this point so that I can say I, had, I, don't, I don't have any underlying conditions that would give me reason to be worried. I would be worried for my mom who's immune, you know, really compromised, but I'm not afraid. I, I actually think maybe I've already had it. I was really sick over Christmas and New Year's, who knows, but mm. I'm not, I'm not afraid. And, but you know, and I flew recently. So I think that um, I'm taking the precautions and trusting others to do it too, you know? Okay. So. And uh, last question, how do you want yeah. to be remembered? Oh gosh. <laughs> um, Hopefully that's in the future a long ways. Um, you know, honestly, I want to be a good person. I want people, I want to like help people. That's really what it's all about. It's really about connecting and caring and loving. And I mean, who cares about anything else? You know, um, I find, you know, connecting with people or sharing that moment is amazing. And so I would like to be known as a great mom, great friend, um, somebody who is loyal and kind and working towards, you know, some sort of good thing. I, I mean, and if I get to act and have more jobs, yay. Um, but if I do something else with my life, you know, who knows? I, I hope at least all those other things, that's the bedrock, you know, I guess that's important to me. So well, thank uh, you for having me. Yeah, thank you so much for, for your time and for, for this great interview. And uh, you know how much I think of you. You're, you're so talented and you're such a great person. You. Um, you're the best. And I, I hope you, you have nicer and greater things on your future. Thank, thank you. you so and much. I hope that you keep getting great people and to interview. This is a great idea. And I think it's... Oh, thank you. Thank you so job. much. Don't forget to share it in the end. Okay, so that's the post, right? It says post? Um. On mine, it usually says share, share with your okay. audience. But, um, okay. You should click yes if it, if it appears. Okay, I'll click yes, post, share. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. Bye, you guys. Thanks, Thank everybody, so for showing Take up. Care. All the Bye. best to you and your family. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye, people. See you later.